This is Mercedes, and this happens to be the last known footage of her alive. On the night of April 16th, 2023, Mercedes was captured on a parking garage camera as she was getting ready to meet her friends at Dave and Buster's Sports Bar. And in the early morning of April 17th, 2023, Mercedes was discovered in a burning vehicle off Interstate 10 near Tonopah, Arizona, in a vehicle that didn't belong to her. And it was clear that she had been assaulted. Bleach had been poured down her throat as she had been burned alive. Who could do such a thing? And almost a year later, why are there no suspects or the slightest idea as to why this happened to Mercedes? This is the unsolved case of Mercedes Vega. Mercedes Mariana Vega was born on March 10th, 2001 in Anchorage, Alaska, and was raised by her mother, Erica, and her stepfather, Tom. Now, Tom, despite being her stepfather, loved Mercedes as his own daughter and had been her father for 17 years. Now, her family consisted of four sisters, Jessica, Alexis, Mackenzie, and Shelby, as well as her brother, Finn. It was evident that Mercedes possessed qualities of an amazing human being. And according to her family, she was always willing to go to great lengths of sacrifice to help those in need. Mercedes was loving, incredibly generous, caring, and possessed a strong work ethic. Additionally, she played the violin and had a beautiful voice and often would be invited to sing the national anthem at sporting events. Now, Mercedes had a love for animals, particularly horses. She enjoyed horseback riding and even had a horse of her own named Cash. If she wasn't singing, working, or spending time with her family, you can bet she was with Cash. All in all, Mercedes was undeniably a good person. She was determined and would put in the hard work to achieve her dreams. Even at the age of seven, she created a PowerPoint presentation to convince her family to take her to Disney World and later on used the same skills to persuade them to let her get a tattoo. It was obvious that Mercedes was articulate. She was even a straight A student in high school. Eventually, Mercedes and her family relocated to Gilbert, Arizona, where they resided until she reached the age of 18. And at that point, she decided to move to Tempe, Arizona, where she believed she could become more independent and live on her own. However, in 2023, when Mercedes was 22 years old, tragedy struck as she was violently murdered. It was a devastating event that shook those who knew her, turning their world upside down. Now, strangely enough, a few weeks before her untimely death, Mercedes had celebrated her birthday in Hawaii with a few friends. Now, upon returning from the trip, she expressed to her mother that she envisioned a long, fulfilling life ahead of her, getting married, having children, and eventually having her ashes spread among the beautiful beaches of Hawaii. She even would tell her mother that that's where her soul belonged. Before she was killed, Mercedes visited her favorite place, Hawaii, one last time. When she came back, she said, Mom, I want my kids to cremate me and spread my ashes in Hawaii because that's where my soul belongs. Her own parents now left with her final wish. She should be us. It should be her kids. It was a Sunday evening, April 16th, 2023, and Mercedes had made plans to meet with some of her friends. And unfortunately, we don't have concrete information on ultimately what they decided to do, which is strange on its own because you'd figure the police would have found out. But we do know that the options were either going to sushi or heading to Dave and Buster's. Now, Mercedes was in contact with two of her friends to finalize their plans, and her last text message was sent at 8.54 p.m. that night. And after that, she unexpectedly stopped replying. Now it's raised concerns that one of her friends reached out hours later, expressing something along the lines of, I guess you're not coming then. Now this silence from Mercedes was unsettling, leaving her friends unsure about her whereabouts and her well-being. Now Mercedes' friends and families have come out to state that they have concerns that she may have deliberately been lured and set up. Now, around 9.15 p.m., surveillance footage from around the apartment complex's garage captured Mercedes on video. Now, she appeared to be walking casually, focused on her phone, and it's worth noting that her family believes she may have been on FaceTime. Again, it's strange that we don't have an answer to because you'd figure the police would have pulled the phone records and at least informed the family. 
Now, judging by her outfit, which is casual, her family speculates that she likely decided to go to Dave and Buster's. And there was nothing in her demeanor that suggests that she was in any danger at all. However, that was far from the truth. Now, a short while later, Mercedes was brutally attacked. She was struck with such force in the head that the parking garage later revealed traces of blood and brain tissue. Now, at this point, we don't know a whole lot about what actually happened. But we do know that she was forcibly taken into a vehicle after the attack. And it was several hours later before anyone became aware that anything had happened. On the night of April 16th, around 9.15, surveillance footage shows Mercedes walking to her car at her Tempe apartment complex. She was heading out to meet friends, and it's the last look at her before she was taken. This is so hard for us to grasp because she did not think anything was going on. Because if she did, she would have been paying attention to her surroundings. Her parents say just seconds later, Mercedes was attacked. She was hit over the head and there was tissue and blood in the parking garage. What happened next is still unknown. Around 1 a.m. on April 17th, the local PD received a distressing call regarding a burning vehicle located near mile marker 85 on Interstate 10. Now, as soon as the fire was extinguished, it became evident that this wasn't just a simple case of arson. Tragically, a lifeless body was discovered in the backseat. It was identified as that of 22-year-old Mercedes Vega. The unsettling part was that she was found a significant distance away, approximately 60 miles away from her apartment. It didn't take long for them to identify that it was Mercedes Vega due to her possession of a Las Vegas sheriff's card. Due to Mercedes' profession as a dancer, she was required to have one. A sheriff's card is like a work permit that allows you to work in the entertainment industry. And when she acquired it, she would have had to submit her fingerprints and do a background check with the sheriff's office. However, due to having this, it made it very easy for the sheriff's department to identify her body. Erica and Tom had just returned from vacation and within hours, they had received the most devastating news of their entire lives. What made this even more difficult is that they received no explanation at all. They were left completely in the dark about where and how her body was discovered. The only thing that they were told is, I'm sorry, your daughter's life has been taken. That's it. Now, what's truly heartbreaking and absolutely crazy is that they found out through the news about how their daughter passed, not through the police department, this is probably the worst way a police department could handle breaking the news to a family about what happened to their family member, which is not giving them any information at all. The findings from the autopsy report provided both crucial and heartbreaking information, but even the report itself was not shared with her family for six months. That means the family spent half a year wondering what happened to their daughter. However, when the report was finally given to them, they learned the following details. It was discovered that Mercedes suffered severe blunt force injuries to her head. Additionally, she had been shot in her upper right arm, which further contributed to her death. However, the autopsy did reveal that she managed to survive the attack completely, but she was left abandoned in a burning vehicle. You see, evidence of smoke was found inside her lungs, which led the medical examiner's office to conclude that she was still breathing when the car was set on fire. This means that Mercedes was burned alive. Now, the toxicology report went to show that Mercedes only had traces of caffeine and THC in her system. This indicates that she was not under the influence of any significant substance. And this is where it gets really strange and disturbing. The autopsy also revealed the presence of bleach in her throat. Mercedes was shot in the arm, hit in the head, had bleach in her throat, and eventually died from smoke inhalation while being burned alive in that car. Her parents believe death wasn't the ultimate goal, and she paid the price for fighting back. Now, during the investigation of the crime scene, a bottle of lighter fluid was discovered alongside Mercedes' body. Additionally, a bottle of bleach and gloves were found in the front seat. Erica, Mercedes' mother, believed that Mercedes may have tried to bite her attackers in self-defense. And it's very possible that the attackers knew this, hence the reason of pouring bleach down her throat. Now, what's truly strange is that Mercedes was not discovered in her own vehicle. And as you guessed it, 
her parents were not provided with any information about the vehicle she was found in once again. In fact, till this day, they still remain in the dark about the vehicle itself. Initially, they were led to believe that she was found in her own car. The day after Mercedes passed, Erica, her mother, received a both disturbing and confusing phone call from the Tempe Police Department. When she answered the phone, she was informed that her car was parked illegally. And for a moment, she was confused only to realize that they weren't referring to her vehicle. They were referring to her daughter's car, as Mercedes was the one who drove a white Dodge Charger that Erica co-signed for, which is why they called Erica when they couldn't get a hold of Mercedes about moving the vehicle. I just don't understand how something like that works. How is it that they didn't run the plates and realize that the owner was involved in a homicide just the day before? I'm not sure, I'm not part of law enforcement, so I don't know, but it just seems like a big oversight on their part. So here is what happened. Her Dodge Charger was discovered deserted behind a restaurant called Culinary Dropout located off Mill Avenue in Tempe. Here is the strange part. We know that the attack took place in her car garage. This suggests that Mercedes would have been going to her vehicle when the attack took place, meaning she wouldn't be going to her car garage if the car wasn't there to begin with. This would suggest that the car was not left behind by her at culinary dropout, but moved by somebody there. And that somebody was not Mercedes herself. As we know, the attack took place in her car garage. And what makes this more interesting is that there is no information whatsoever about who may have moved the vehicle to begin with, despite there being cameras virtually on every corner of that area. Now, I have managed to track down some of the cameras in the area using Google Maps, but you get my point. There's no way that there's no recorded evidence or footage of the individual that moved the car. There is security cameras pointing in every direction of that restaurant. There is no way that this footage does not exist. I mean, virtually every modern day apartment has cameras pointed at the entrances and exits of car garages, not to mention all the cameras that they would have passed that are just sitting on traffic lights. But yet again, this footage either doesn't exist or is just being hidden from the public. And again, this seems to be a reoccurring theme in this case where the public and most importantly, her family and parents have just been left out in the dark. This is absolutely maddening. Now, many of Mercedes family and friends have come out to state that they believe this was a targeted attack based on many variables. One, why didn't they just kill her in the car garage unless they were trying to extract some sort of information? And why attack her and then put her in another vehicle and then set it on fire? And just to point out, how did the attackers gain access to the parking garage? Most apartment buildings have key fobs to enter the parking garages, and a record of who accessed these parking garages would be kept on a computer belonging to the apartment building. The police department should be able to at least find out which key fobs were used to enter the apartment building garage leading up to the attack. And how did her attackers conveniently know what time Mercedes would leave her apartment building? Did they just wait there all day? It just seems like whoever did this had personal ties to Mercedes and had the necessary information to attack her like that. I could only assume that a lot of these questions and answers are going to remain unanswered, but I full heartedly believe that the police happen to know more than what they're disclosing. But regardless of the matter, it appears that Mercedes family and friends refuse to stay silent. They continue to hand out flyers and post them around the city and even held a balloon release in her memory where they wore black and red. They have gone on to create a GoFundMe in order to cover expenses of a reward that they have put out for any information that leads up to an arrest. Also, the GoFundMe will help bring her ashes to Hawaii, which is what she wished for before her passing. And yes, the link to that is in the description below. With that said, it's truly tragic and unfortunate that any of this could happen with such little answers. Now, Mercedes' father has gone on to express that he feels that the police department just doesn't care because of her profession. Now, people online have gone on to make all kinds of speculations, from the police department covering it up to the cartel being involved. However, with such little information, that's all that we're left to do, speculate. And my heart goes out to the family who have lost such 
a bright light in their lives. I hope that we can continue to spread awareness of this tragedy by sharing this story. That's really all it takes as we can't allow this case to become cold. And the Tempe Police Department need to know that there is pressure from the family and the public for answers. I have never in all the cases that I've covered so far felt so angry about the way a police department has handled the case. Again, I'm not sure why there's so much secrecy and I hope that when everything comes to light that there is a reason and whatever that reason is, I hope it's a good one because I can't think of many or any at this point. Again, as the public, I think it's our responsibility to keep these stories alive. So make sure you click this story right here to give a voice to those who never had one. And again, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell if you're interested in supporting this channel. So until next time, I hope you stay safe and I will see you when the lights go out.